Welcome in. I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 and over 60 woman. I don't know if I'm ever going to stop saying that. I am so excited. I've got goosebumps right now about this video today, and I'm so happy that you're here. I did a New Year's resolution video, which I don't do New Year's resolutions, but I definitely have focuses. In other words, I start the new year with a focus. And I talked about my focus. If you didn't see that video, you might want to take a few minutes and go watch it. I'll have it linked in the description box down below. What I talked about is where I was putting my energy or my focus for the new year. So many of you commented down below. First of all, you loved that topic. Thank you very much. I love that topic too. And you wanted to know what my daily meditation practice was. So I have a surprise and that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you're new here, I'm so glad you stopped by. I hope you'll consider subscribing while you're here and make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want all the good stuff, you might want to consider signing up for my Sunday morning email newsletter. I'm telling you, it's the most popular thing about my channel. I could leave tomorrow. No one would ask about me. They would want to know what the Sunday morning email newsletter is. It is something I send out every Sunday morning, clearly. And it kind of lists all the cool things I found throughout the week. Good information, something I think that you need to know, a great recipe, something I bought that's really worth the money or not. Whatever I would tell you if we were sitting by the pool, sipping our iced tea, which I can do because I live in Florida and I know it's January. <laughs> So if you're interested, the link is in the description box down below. It's super easy, super free, super fun. I think you're going to love it. Well, today I am so thrilled because I'm talking about something that is near and dear to my heart. You guys know this by now. Spirituality and connecting with that energy of source is my wheelhouse. That's where I live. And so many of you asked me to share my morning routine. And I thought about that and I thought, you know what? I think I want to pull in an expert. And so that is what I have done. And I want to welcome in my new friend and someone I'm so excited to have you guys meet, Kelly Bowker. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Hi. Hello. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. I'm very, very excited. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you. And you guys, you're going to love Kelly. You're going to fall in love with her in about two minutes. She is just like us, a woman our age looking for a greater connection. And her journey and her story is so very fascinating. I want you to jump in, Kelly, and let us know a little bit about you, your journey, and where you're at now. And then she's going to share with us some great tips on how we can really have a morning ritual, a morning routine, a morning journey that sets us up for a fabulous day. Yes. I I am so humbled to be referred to as an expert. I'm kind of sending up to my guides, can you hear this stuff? It's like, wow. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> I, I don't feel like an expert. I'm just a regular girl, just like all of all of you. So my story kind of starts with as many of ours does with when we get to that place in life where we get to be a, a half a bubble off plum, as my daddy would say. And I started to really do some deep diving because I had been boiled to the surface for me when I was about 55. I'm 61 now. My journey, I've always been a seeker. I've always known there was a greater reality. I just was born to this earth asking those big questions. And I'm from a very small town in Maine. And when you asked questions, the you know, all those years ago, there were I didn't have the internet. The only place to go was the local church, and it was a Baptist church. Well, hallelujah. Okay. For those of you, and I'm no dissing it, because truly every step on our journey is an important step. And that was a wonderful step in my journey. When I would go to church and they would talk about the love of Jesus and they would talk about the Holy Spirit, I could feel, and it is, it is the Holy Spirit that moves in us and makes us, our heart expand and makes us just well with love and appreciation for all that we've been given and all that we are. I would feel all of that. And I'm getting goose pimples even just talking about it. But then the guy up front would start telling me that my Catholic friends were all going to hell and my Jehovah Witnesses friends were all going to hell. And basically everybody that I knew that wasn't in the Baptist church was going to hell. The God that I loved, I just knew that couldn't be true. But because I had that, what I would call a manifestation of that beautiful connection, that love, that 
well, now I've even learned that some call it the Kundalini energy, which I'm not very up on, but that has been explained to me. I Because I felt that, I thought all the other crap that they were talking about must be somehow true. And so my journey has been unraveling that. All of that programming, all of that dogma, all of that less than, not good enough, dirty sinner stuff that was programmed into my young brain, I've spent my life unraveling it. And knowing and following that nudge that I would feel, that pull that I would feel, that so many of you watching, I know, because the energy of our planet is rising all the time. It's getting higher and higher. And that is why so many of us, like I did when I was about 55, started to feel this unrest. I wasn't okay. My, I've always been a happy person. I read The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale when I was like 10. And I've lived that kind of life. I've always been positive. But all of a sudden, that voice in my head started to get grumpier and grumpier. And all of the beautiful tools in my toolbox that always had worked were not working. And I wasn't okay. I, I just felt lost and like I didn't know who I was as a person. I knew I've been, I'm now I've been happily married for 42 years. And I knew who I was as Mike's wife. I knew who I was as a mother, as a teacher, as a nurse. But who was I? And I just and I just felt this longing. Well, as our team in non-physical will do, if you don't listen to the unrest, it then gets it, louder. It gets louder. <laughs> so I started to get sick. I got sick oh. one thing after another. Influences, bronchitis, pneumonias. Well, my lungs, I'm an asthmatic anyway, my lungs were getting really debilitated because, and I just I'll take a quick aside. Up to that point, I had read dozens and dozens and dozens of self-help books. Every one of them, I skipped over the section about meditation because I couldn't meditate. My mind was too busy. I could not meditate. And inner child work, because that just seemed stupid. I just, that, that, had, that made no sense to me. So I always skipped those sections that were in every self-help book I ever read. So I get to this place, and as is my typical MO, something's wrong. I'm going to do some research. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to take it by the ears and I'm going to figure this out. So I dive into the internet and I ask, how do I build up my lungs? And that's when I found Wim Hof. Wim Hof is, is wonderful. Research him. If you, if he, this, his process is fabulous and it's a breathing technique. And so basically to speak kind of nursey for a second, it is hyperoxygenation followed by hypoxia. And so just like when we stand up too fast and we get that feeling, we're inducing that. And what I learned over time is what now I call it's an altered state. We have to become altered to blend, to blend with the all. We can't stay with our concrete linear thinking and expect that we're going to merge our heart with the heart of the, the cosmos. It just isn't going to happen. So I started to stretch those times, that ooh time, you know, that, and I could just feel, I could just feel. And that was my inroad to meditation. It's been a long, long time since I've had to do that, but it helped me to learn how to connect. And that with, I studied a lot of Joe Dispenza. Once I began to realize that I, I could put my toe into the meditation pool, then I, I learned, and in Joe's work, he talks about the space, the space of becoming no one, no person, no thing, no a body, no blah, blah, blah. That is very powerful, that merging with that space. And so over time, it will be, we are almost within just a couple of days of two years ago. So I'm meditating at that, at that time, I'm meditating on my, on a personal note, I started going to some counseling because of that. I just couldn't get my head wrapped around my joy again. I just had lost my joy. And so I was doing some counseling and she introduced me to the psychology aspect of inner child work. And I mentioned to her the, the weird experiences that I was having in my meditations. And she told me to look up what it meant to be an empath. And 60 or 59 years old, I, I didn't know what that meant. I dove into the metaphysical side of the internet because I'd stayed away from that mostly because of the dogma, because of the beliefs that was naughty, people, you know, whatever. Even though I had followed the, the workings of, of Abraham Hicks and, and people channeled work, Neil Donald Walsh, Walsh's books had impacted my life. 
but it was almost like I still held that part of it at a distance. And so I went into meditation one day, laid my phone on my chest. They dropped into my mind to start repeating, let the words come. And I began to channel. And the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> and well, so that's that a pretty profound story. One thing I want to comment on is you are a nurse. I have come across in my fascination with this whole topic, so many nurses who end up developing broader skills and a broader awareness of the energies around us. And I think it's because those of you who go into nursing, you have just a heart, you know, you lead with your heart and you go into it to help people. And then you start connecting. And before you know it, it's you've taken that empath a, into a, a, bro a broader area. Yes, a great deal. When you are living as an empath and you don't know it, a great deal of your life satisfaction comes from externally helping. Okay. Person. So maybe were you still working as a nurse when you were going through that something doesn't feel right? I was, period? But I was I was teaching. I really have never been a true nurse. Mm -hmm. I, I I did alternate things with my nursing career and I taught the certified nursing assistant program. Okay. For like 23 years. And I was uh -huh. in my last year of teaching when this when this developed. I was in my last year of teaching. Before yeah. I yep. So when you started meditating and I can, my opinion, based on my meditation, I used to meditate for like two hours a day. Meditation is the gateway drug. Yeah. <laughs> it will. And the things that happen to me in meditation are nothing even close to the things that happen to me outside of meditation when I'm meditating. And I think it's because that vibrational attunement goes with me throughout the day. So all the things, all the wild, we would call them wild in our society, things that have happened to me have happened, I believe, as a result of meditating regularly and then having my energy being in a certain place to have things come in. Would you agree with that? I would. I absolutely would. My, I've, I've written two books and my second book, the name of the book is called Establishing Your Frequency. And what okay. my guides have taught is that when we deliberately manage our vibrational output, that is the, that's the magic wand of life. Because we are indeed creating our own experience. We are literally, my, I, I mean, I could go into so much and I, I know we're not going to today, but there is no reality that does not exist. It is all there. So mm -hmm. the Kelly who grow old, grows to be a hundred with Mike Bowker and we're healthy and vital and happy, that is right out there. And the Kelly who allows herself to get ill and debilitated and Michael gets sick and we end up blah, 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 blah. That's a reality too. Mm -hmm. Where am I vibrating? Yeah. What is my frequency calling in? That's the magic, you guys. Yeah. It's the magic. And, and so the, there's a lot of tips, tricks, and hacks in that book, plus my my angel team, which that that we will talk about another day. But the it it's it is exactly we do take this out. You know, we speak speaking about a morning practice. I don't know how many of you have seen my interview on Next Level Soul. They asked a question. He Alex asked my guides a question and he said if basically to the to the point of if there was one thing that you could give to my, to my guides that you that you could give to humanity what would it be? And my guides basically said understanding and deliberately utilizing your energy system. We all have an energy system. We all, we, so when, when the angels came to me, it's awfully, how many people, you know, it's like, I hear myself say that and I'm like, who, you, is, that? You know, it's who like, is this? <laughs> who says this? It's like, but Angel Ariel came through to me and said that when humans were given the continuum of emotion that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, we were gifted with the chakra system okay. to facilitate managing those emotions. And along with the chakra system, there is a team of nine angels, nine beautiful angels, each 
building on the other, each working collectively as a group. They work whether we know they're there or not. It doesn't matter. They are part of our energy system. And so what I am going to share with everybody is what I have been given as my morning routine. And since even with all of this stuff that's been happening to me, you, you guys, since I have started doing this morning routine deliberately and regularly, yes, they're whispering in my ear, not every day because you forget, but I try to remember to do it every day, just like we all do. I, I have days I do great. I have days that I screw up. But when I'm doing it and practicing it regularly, the ability to hear them, I've been able to channel for two years, but to be able to decipher between the voice of my guides and my inner dialogue is getting better and better and better since I started doing this. And, and I, that's where that's what I keep coming back to. It's such a lesson is that connecting is a skill that you develop. Mm. We all have it. It's our birthright. We're wired for it. But it's just like painting. It's just like shooting a basketball. Yeah, you can do it. But two years down the road, you're going to do it a whole lot better if you've been doing it every day. That's right. It's it's that building that, would you say it's kind of like um, building that structure? I, I heard someone saying, okay, so you sit down and you meditate and you put in a row of bricks. And then you sit down the next day and meditate and you put another row on top of that. And you keep building this structure for that energy to sit and develop Ooh, that if you, and that's the thing I want to say is that you are just, you're us. You're mm. exactly us. You just kept walking down the road and developing that connection. So I want to ask you one thing before we go into the morning routine, because I'm really, I'm curious about this from your perspective. Uh, can you speak to us about the Jesus frequency? And, you know, I look at Jesus as incarnated on the planet, shared his wisdom but I also look at it as a, a Jesus frequency. And when you're not in form, when you're not, you know, in these meat suits, you right. can choose to work within the Jesus frequency. That can be a choice that you choose in your in-between incarnation. Can you share, Kelly, what your thoughts are on that? That's such a wonderful question. And so dear to my heart. I still, I pray, Father, because when I pray, Father, blah, 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 my heart opens. I pray through Jesus' name because it, it my jaw start to go, which is my physical sign when the energy is right here, they're right here, because it connects me. It connects me. There's no wrong way. I want to say that so much to everyone listening. There's no wrong way to connect. Use your own inner guidance for that. Oh, when it resonates, when you get the energy, when you feel the expansion, you're doing it right. Whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. Do it again. Do it again. But to specifically, they keep right now, they're dropping into my mind a picture that they give me of the old fashioned person, the old fashioned operator for the telephone, plugging that thing into the wall. You know, oh, that, that's, yeah. what I'm talking about? when we <laughs> sit down and we center and we maybe ask a question, or we just breathe our love, there is a plug-in that's happening. You, you're plugging into the all. It's all available to us. All the frequencies, all the knowings, all the love and the joy and the, oh, all of it, all of it is right here, right ready for us to tap into. So I'm going to ask for a little guidance because this is such a sacred subject to me. I, I just want to do it justice. That which manifested as Jesus and the teachings, as with all of us, it is part of the all, it is part of the one, and there is a frequency to his teachings that was love and oneness. And what more is there? And yes, there are many, many, many teachers that have taught many, many things, but energy is a real thing. It's a tangible thing. And the, the more people put their, their love into that mix that is the Jesus frequency, 
it just expands it and it connects us all. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It is absolutely there. I have channeled Jesus. It was incredible. I almost feel unworthy to like really deliberately try to bring him through. But I, when I do one-to-ones with people, one day it shocked me. This older lady, she was in her 80s and she said, I would really like to hear from Jesus. And Kelly was getting ready to say, well, I don't specifically, but and, and we're I got not a, friends. <laughs> well, no, I got a, woo, and it was like, oh, yeah, oh. no, he's right here and he's coming through. And because, because her relationship with him was so tangible and my relationship with him was so tangible, the, the end the frequency just went, oh, it was fabulous. It was just fabulous. It was just fabulous. When we talk about our morning routine and we talk about, my guides use the words with me, the word ritual. And I didn't get ritual for a long time. I kind of poop on it, but I'm realizing the importance of ritual and practices. When we deliberately take the steps, just like we wash our face and we put on our creams and we shower and we do our hair, we are tending to something. We need to tend to our energy as well. And when we tend to it, and then we sit and we say, Heavenly Father, and we we pray about whatever. My two beautiful twins that are percolating, getting ready to be born any minute now, any day now. And, and I send that beautiful energy. There's a clarity. There's a clarity. It w- absolutely will impact your life. It will. There's, I'd, there's not a question in my mind. There's not, there's no way to do it and not. So mm-hmm. let's, let's jump into that right now, Kelly. What I think would be really helpful is something that anyone can do at any stage of connectivity from that, you know, someone who's just like, I can't meditate. I got the monkey mind thing going. I can't do it to someone who says I've been meditating for 20 years, you know, so we have a range, but the thing I want everyone to know is, is, is us. She's, she's us. And she just took this journey and kept at it and is now a medium is a channel is doing such incredible work in the world. So what I want to say to you is that not everyone's going to take Kelly's journey, but everyone can have a spiritual practice that transforms your life. I do have to just speak. Can I do mediumship? Yes, I can, but I don't do mediumship. Okay. Okay. It was a step on my journey. It was an important step, but it's not part of my journey now. And I would also say that this practice that I'm going to share, can it be a meditation? Yes. But does it need to be? No, it's an intention. Okay. It's, it doesn't take, it isn't, you don't have to alter yourself to do it. You have to use your intention to do it. So would you like me to kind of describe? I would I love it. Yeah. So my guides always start and they, they've begun to use the term the sacred breath because breath is life. So our breath, they've given me many different examples of it, what they call the sacred breaths. But w- we just start by sitting down, having a little minute of quiet and beginning with that sacred breath. That, and when you breathe in, you feel that space. You're creating space. All of us need to create space for the all to come in. That's where the magic happens. If we're so filled all the time with all of our day-to-day whatever, there's no room for spirit to come in. So it's just a, anybody can take a breath and feel the edges of that breath. And you feel the edges and you just hold for a second. And you just let it out. And you do a few of those breaths with the intention because we were born to this earth with free will. We we get to decide what we're going to do. And they honor that completely. So we are setting our intention. I'm going to connect and I'm going to tend to the energy that is me, that is the all. That's That's what we're doing. We're tending. We're doing our morning tending to. And so we start with a few of those breaths. And then I picture, I bet most of your viewers watched Cinderella when you were little. And you remember when the pumpkin got turned into a carriage, the way the energy yeah. went. I picture that magical energy surrounding me. And in, with my intention, 
I say perfect size, perfect shape, and sealed completely. Now, like, do you have to have those exact words? No. You are creating a beautiful sphere, a bubble, whatever you want to think of it like you're creating your bubble. After you create your bubble, and this is all done for me, it's just done with those beautiful breaths. I just keep breathing and I see that energy forming around me, it just forms. And then I take another breath and I just, with my intention, I say, yes, bring that beautiful energy, that love, the love that God has for me, the love of the universe for me, the perfection that I am. And I see it. Some people don't aren't good at visualizing, but you can have the knowing that it will come into your bubble. It will come around your bubble. It is moving and it is working. It goes within your body. It goes through your body, into your cells. And with your intention, you say, yes, yes. Bring that love within me. Let it do the work that it can do. I don't have to understand. I say yes. And this energy is working within you. And then you, and so if you can picture yourself in your pumpkin <laughs> and, then you take, and then you take a breath and with your intention, you just, you kind of command it. You, you just kind of, I feel it. You may, you may not with my hands, with my feet, with the bottom of my spine, I send my love, my energy, the energy that is Kelly. I send it down to mother earth, to the heart of mother earth. And I send it with gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Earth, for carrying us through our days. Thank you for giving us all that you do, the love and the support. And I send it to, and the words that she gave to me were to her heart, the oh. heart of Mother Earth, which is infinity. And I, I literally, in my mind's eye, I tie off my cords of energy, for lack of a better term. So now we are surrounded we are grounded and we are asking now for our shield. I see this beautiful silver shield on the front of me. I see it come from behind and then I cosmically seal it on the sides. And this is my protection for my core energy. It's my protection against, you know, the feeling when you walk down the store or you're in a busy place and you can just feel the ugh of the energy. This protects you from that. This holds, this process holds that out. So when your kid, your adult kid comes into your space and starts at you, it, it bounces off. It will literally bounce off. The shielding is very, very important. So it's surround, ground, shield. And I'm going to give credit to that. Your, your viewers can look up Pat Longo. I learned those three steps from her. And then my guides took those and they built on it. And the next step is balance. When I channeled the team of angels that came through me, they gave me what they call the sacred circuit. And it is, if you can, in your mind's eye, picture a figure eight, a flowing circuit of energy that's a figure eight. These circuits are going all through our chakra system. They travel out to the cosmos. They take with it anything that doesn't serve us. With our intention, we are releasing all that doesn't serve us, and we are asking for the codes and the frequencies that we need to come back into our energy system, and we say yes. And then it travels in that figure eight to Mother Earth equally, and it does the same things. It transmutes the energy if it can be transmuted. It releases it if it can be released, if it's time for it to be released, and Mother Earth will send back to you what you need in this moment. And those need to be balanced. And this is a really important key. Our connection with the sovereignty and the awesomeness that is Mother Earth is as important as to the cosmos, to God, however you want to think about that. It's equal because we are all one. There's where we miss. The indigenous people are more connected to the Earth. So picture their figure eight. Their loop to the earth is greater and their loop up is smaller. Someone like Kelly, who lived her whole life from her heart chakra up, my beautiful, my energy up was beautiful and full and awesome, but it was constricted and blocked and whatever from, from my heart down. These beautiful sacred circuits need to be balanced and we balance them in our mind's eye by just breathing in and then we say, bam. 
Mm. And we just balance. We just balance. Because we are inviting our angel team in to do this work, it will balance perfectly. And then we ask Angel Ariel, who is our, the angel that connects us to the cosmos, we ask her to cleanse. The next step after balancing is cleansing, to cleanse our energy. And I sometimes I see like a giant uh, shower head over me. Sometimes I see a waterfall over me, but I feel that energy and I let my mind, I let the angels give me whatever color it needs to be. Sometimes it changes color. Sometimes, most of the time, it's silver white and it washes through my DNA, through my cells, through my body, through my bubble, through my home, through my life. As the energy just rolls through and it just cleanses because my guides taught me that we have a negative or even listening to the news and we get that energetic hit, it's like a muddy handprint on our energy. Mm -hmm. and, and that muddy handprint has a magnetic force and it's going to pull another muddy handprint and another muddy handprint. So we ask Angel Ariel and she just cleans that out, just washes that away. And then the last thing that we do, because we are all one, all time is now. There is nothing more than this beautiful present moment right now. With our resolve, we reach across timelines, dimensions, incarnations, and realms. We reach with our power and we ask that all energy that is ours comes back to us in this moment. All that is ours. Because we also lose parts of our energy in our struggles in the world, in our work, in our giving, in our whatever, we lose parts of our of ourselves. So it, it is a very, it is surround, ground, shield, balance, cleanse, and call back. And that is my morning ritual. And it really has power. Oh my gosh, Kelly, that was the best thing that I have heard in a long, long, long time. It was fabulous. I could feel it. I love the whole process. I will watch this over and over and over again. I'm going to make notes. <laughs> and you know what I think I'll do is I think I will put the process in the description box down below to so that people can copy that and just so just that we remember yep. the process. That is beautiful. And was this something that was given to you in bits and pieces from your guides? Something that's developed over time? How have you, how did this come to be your particular routine? I went away on a trip and I went to a retreat because I wanted to experience what other people who were like me, I wanted to be in the same room with them. Yeah. And I met Pat Longo. She is about four foot nothing and she's got power that is like unbelievable. This woman, you just standing beside her, you feel her. She's so cool. She's so freaking cool. And she's been doing this work for 40 something years mm -hmm. and she teaches. And one of the things that she teaches her people are surround ground and shield. And, and I was like in that again, now this was only in November and I'm still at that place of, yeah, rituals, that's bull crap. Blah, blah. I don't need to do, I don't need, I don't need that. I don't need that. Well, during that time, during that event, a woman was uh, coming around and she was just moving through the energy and she was getting drop in messages to give. And she started by me and she comes back to me and she does this and she goes, you really need to close down your crown chakra, girl. And I'm like, huh, really? And I thought, interesting. So that was a piece of the puzzle. And then when I came home in my own practices, the guides just nudge you. They just, yeah. they just keep dropping it in and dropping it in until you finally give in and, and do what they tell you to do. I'm a stubborn cuss, aren't I? Because, you know, it's just what, you know, we're just human. We can't help that we're human. I mean, I want to do a little segue and talk about that because that has happened to me, Kelly, so often. And it just recently happened to me on another topic. It is like, and this was my experience this last time. I just am feeling this push. Like I, I'm supposed to be doing something, do something, do something. I'm just put, just, it's constant. And I was looking around, you know, trying this, trying that, doing this, completely denying the thing that I knew it was. <laughs> and the minute, it, and let me know if this happens for you too. I'm sure it does. The minute I said, okay, quiet. 
it's like silence. Yes. It went from push, push, push to like, okay, go, go, go. We're here. Go, go, go. How does it work for you? That's, I mean, that's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, so, I mean, to give a more broad answer to that, I mean, so take me back to being 55. So how do they communicate? That's what we're asking. How does yeah. how do our, because we all have a team. We all have a team that are, that love us so much and are working with us all the time to give us nudges and impulses for our highest good, for whatever our highest good is. And all of our highest good is different. It all is different. And so I'm, I'm getting unhappy. I'm just, I'm feeling unsatisfied. Things to sit, and this is something else, to sit in a moment and look at your life and say, there is nothing for me to be unhappy about. And to just want to cry because yeah. I'm not okay. I know that as I speak these words, and I just want you to know, I'm sending you all my love. There are so many in our world right now that don't feel okay. There's a piece missing. What is it that's missing? And they just don't quite know how to grab onto it. And that piece is our spiritual development. Yeah. Our oneness. Our it connection. Is, it is the peace of knowing that we are one with God. We are extensions of source energy. That is that is the, the peace. So yeah, when I'm on when I'm going about and I'm starting, it's like I'm a, I'm at my first thing is I'm a half a bubble off plump. I'm like, okay, something's not right. I don't feel right. I just don't feel right. And so then I just kind of sit with it, you know, you and you can use there's two things. My adult Kelly would say, okay, Angel Ariel, is this something I just need to wash out of my system? Did I pick something up? Is this somebody else's crap? Because I'm a, I'm an empath and, and I pick up like a sponge, but most people do. And so I kind of feel that, or is this an inner child thing? And we could do a whole hour on inner child work. And I invite, I invite us to do that because my guides have said another one of the agreements that we made when we came to be human was the fact that our programming gets laid down by the time we're seven to nine years old. And so then we're 50 and 60 years old, wanting to shine this light, but feeling something's not quite right. And it is reaching in and creating that beautiful relationship between the beautiful, strong, powerful woman that all of us are in this moment and that vulnerable, hurt, little girl that lives inside of us all that needs to be heard and needs to be seen. You know, I know I've said on different interviews, I skipped that section of every darn book I ever read. I, I, I can't remember if I've said that to you today or not, but I did. And, and I just didn't realize that it is the integration of all the aspects of who we are. And it is an actual, it's an actual third person relationship. How many times have you heard people say self love? We need to love ourselves. We need to we need to love ourselves. Well, I was 55 years old going, what to bleep does that mean? I don't know what that means. I know what that means now. Yeah. And I know how to help people figure it out. And it is a relationship with yourself. We live our lives as women of this generation. We were trained if you're a good little girl, if you're a good little girl, you don't get angry. Good little girls never get angry. Good little girls never, ever are grumpy. You, you look at all that you've got to be thankful for. I'll give you something to cry about. How many of us have heard those words in our lives? That little, delicate, precious little being. And our parents did the best they knew how to do. But they did lay down this programming because it's what we agreed to when we came to the earth. And that and that programming needs to be unwound and unraveled. Yeah. So how do we love ourselves in this moment? How do you love yourself? All of you, how do you love yourself? All that you do for the world, the shining of the light that you do out of these two beautiful hands of yours, the kindness and the nurturing and the patting of the hair and the holding and the rocking and the meaning, you know, figuratively, the kindnesses and the gentleness and the sacrifice that you have done all your life for everyone around you. Turn your hands on to you. 
turn those beautiful, beautiful, loving, nurturing hands onto you and care for you and love you. Ask yourself daily, minute by minute, Kelly, Colleen, what do you need right now to be more happy? When's the last time anyone asked you that, right? And when, and then you let yourself settle into that energy of the other part of ourselves, that human part of ourselves, the vulnerable part of ourselves. Let yourself settle into that energy and be like, I need, I need a cup of tea. Well, all right, baby girl, we're going to get you a cup of tea. And let me put it in your favorite cup. And let me get you one of your favorite cookies. And let me tuck you in and put your feet up because you like to and turn to the sun baby because you enjoy that nurture yourself just oh, like it's so baby, beautiful if i were to come to your house this is another beautiful example or if you were to come to mine how would i treat you i would make sure you were cared for mm -hmm. i would make sure you had everything just right well now i do that for me yeah that was that was beautiful kelly thank you it was beautiful yeah i was stunned listening to you <laughs> This has been so fabulous. I'll tell you, you have given me so many insights. I'm going to go back and watch this over and over and over again. Definitely the morning practice, definitely the self. I skipped over all the inner child stuff too. I guess I have to go back and do that. You, you know, clearly this is my mission because this is what we discussed during this video. So I appreciate that. If someone wants to find out more about you, Kelly, where do they go? Well, Though I can talk to angels, technology has me baffled. <laughs> so I don't have an I don't have a website, but I do have a scheduling app and I do have some pretty fun things going right mm -hmm. now. I have a Tuesday morning. I'm Eastern Standard Time. I live in Maine. Tuesday morning at 9:30 a.m. I do a group meeting meeting. There's a, a, an $8 fee to that. And you can find that at my scheduling app. And I'm starting brand new Monday nights at 7 p.m. I'm starting a group with the intention of expanding your own ability to connect. Oh. So my Tuesday group is I basically just open my heart to, to the guides and the guides bring through. We've talked about the inner child work. We've talked about emotion. Oh, it's been wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. They lead us because just like you said, that connection, the more people, the more energy, oh, that brings that connection. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And my Tuesday is kind of wide open for topics. And then there's questions and answers. We might do a meditation together. We do energy work, light language. But Monday is going to be, the focus is going to be all those same things, the same modalities. But the focus is going to be all of us learning together. Like, how do you really, how do you hear the difference between my voice and my guide's voice. How do you learn to know that? Do, can I tell you what's going to happen? I haven't got a clue, but I know that my guides wouldn't have, wouldn't have nudged me to put this out there if it wasn't going to be awesome. Right. So go to it, my web, my, my app is present moment magic, all one word dot as dot M E. And there are different offerings. There's my, I do one-to-ones with people. I'm pretty booked up, but you can, you know, get yourself on the list if you want to be there. And and then I'm doing my groups. And you're also here on YouTube. Oh, yes. Goodness. I, yeah, you can tell how good I am at promoting myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yes, I love doing my YouTube. I I have my YouTube channel is, is also called Present Moment Magic. I now have a group on Facebook. I have a page on Facebook. My page is Kelly Bowker channel and my group is present moment magic dash Kelly Bowker. So okay. reach out to me, I'd love to have, I'd love for our, um, our tribes to merge. Yeah. Because we need a tribe. Mm -hmm. We need a tribe of like minded people who are not going to judge, who are just going to, just going to beckon you forward. And that is, that is what I'm, my intention is and I, it's what's happening. Yeah. And I'll have all that information listed in the description box down below. Kelly, this has been fabulous. I hope you'll come back and see us again. I would love to. I would all love right. to, love to, love to. All right, Kelly. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.